Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you are now. You know, ever since the lockdowns began, I have lost all sense of day and night. I'm Partha and welcome to my home with a fake background of a very peaceful office, which is exactly the opposite of what my home is usually like, you know, these days. It's, uh, so welcome to my home, my gym, my restaurant, my kids' school, the playground, my club, whatever you need, we have it all today. Uh, now, this is exactly where the problem with trust begins. When you work remotely, people begin to wonder, is he really working or is he up to something else? This is what Karen is going to speak about today. Now, for many years, I've been saying that we help companies transform their workplaces and help them transition into new ways of working. And it was never really easy to convince clients. Today, a pandemic has done what I could not do. That is convince people about the advantages and disadvantages of remote working. Thank you for coming. Like they say on board an aircraft, especially when you know that you have a choice of so many other things to do online, like so many webinars and so little time. Uh, and by the way, what do you do when you go online? Do you check your email, watch cat videos, do a little bit of shopping, or unfriend somebody on Facebook who has put yet another uh, kind of you know, photograph of our home baking experiments? So we promised to keep this short, and that is why uh, we mentioned it as 10 minutes. So without further ado, please allow me to quickly introduce you to Karen Plum. Uh, Karen is a director of R&D at Advanced Workplace Associates, or AWA. AWA, which started in London in the 90s, has been a pioneer in workplace transformation and is present across the globe today. Uh, Karen has been researching the knowledge worker mindset for many, many years now, and is considered to be a guru around how the human mind works. So Karen will present a 10 minute talk on trust and how it gets impacted when workers work remotely. This is being streamed live on YouTube. I hope you're getting the feed on YouTube as well as on blend.world, uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, Daily Motion, as well as on Facebook. Now following the talk, Karen will be happy to take a few questions. To ask a question, please type your question on the chat box or the comments section on YouTube. I'll be watching that screen. You can also ask questions on the chat box at blend.world slash live, which also has a live stream. Uh, so the floor is all yours, Karen, or um, the mic is all yours. I'm not sure which is correct. English. The ether, yeah. <laughs> 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 The ether is all mine. Thank you, Parta. Um, and, uh, and I'm new to this uh, live streaming, so I hope you'll uh, just uh, bear with me for a second whilst I um, tr try and share my screen and share the right one of my screens. Um, perhaps, Parta, you'll tell me uh, what you're seeing. Are you seeing just the slides or are you seeing my notes? I can see a full slide. See the full slide. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for the, uh, for the warm introduction and uh, great to be with you everybody today to this uh, short talk about um, trust and how um, it comes under some pressure when we're working apart from each other. As Partha said, I'm Karen from uh, AWA and I've been researching knowledge worker productivity and um, in the productivity of individuals and teams for the last uh, six years, looking at academic um, research and trying to turn the findings into um, practical solutions, things that um, non-academics can, uh, can make use of. So what I'm going to do today, um, just briefly in uh, hopefully a little under 10 minutes, is to talk about trust. Um, what, what actually is trust? Uh, what did we find out from the research? Um, and how trust can be um, damaged potentially when we work apart from each other. And then I'll finish with, uh, with a rallying call for you to own your trust um, in the future. And, uh, and then we'll hand back to Partha who will hopefully fire a, a few questions um, from, uh, from our, our audience and, uh, and we'll wrap up in about, um, about 18 to 20 minutes, I guess. So what is trust? Here's our definition of trust um, that we got from the research. And you'll notice that in that first sentence, there are the words reliability, truth, and ability. I think often when we, when we talk about trust and when we think about it, we think about it at, a, at an emotional level. Um, and we do have to bear in mind that there are other things uh, that send signals to our, our brains about um, other people and whether we can rely on those people. 
and whether we can rely on them to act in the best interests of, of our team and our organization as opposed to um, acting perhaps more from, from self-interest. And then there's a number of different things going on here. Um, we talk um, in the research, they talk about um, trust coming from a couple of different places. And one is, uh, is from the brain. So the, the, the head, if you like, uh, the logical brain is looking for signs of, of competence and expertise in other people. You know, are they, are they adequately qualified and experienced for me to trust that, that their knowledge and their skills are accurate? And the research is called that cognition-based trust. So that's all about the brain and, and how we're thinking. The other aspect is, is, comes from the heart, um, and it's more about the emotional ties between people. Um, what experience have I had with you um, that would lead me to trust you or perhaps not uh, to trust you so much? And the research is called that affect-based trust. So if you want to find out any more about these, um, please go, go to Google and, uh, and look for cognition-based trust or affect-based trust. I'm sure that uh, will, will give you some um, additional things to, uh, to, to look at. But often we blur these two and um, we tend to make decisions on our, our gut feelings, our, our gut uh, reactions, if you like, when perhaps we ought to be thinking, you know, is this really about how, how I feel about this person or is there more information and more evidence I might be looking for to, uh, to help me to decide um, and to interpret this person's behavior. So just uh, briefly wanted to share um, our research findings with you. There's plenty of, um, about all of this on our website, advancedworkplace.com, if you want to uh, read more. But the research, just to reassure you, is based on, um, or the findings are based on 20 years of academic research. So not our research, but research conducted by um, academics over that 20 year period. It's all been peer reviewed. It all has a robust methodology. So we're pretty confident that this represents the best available um, academic evidence um, on this topic. And what we did was to look at team performance and what are the things that um, help to team performance to flourish? What are the factors that we might um, uh, do well to focus on in order to make sure that, um, that, that teams can um, perform effectively? And what we discovered was that there are six different factors. You'll see them on this diagram. And in fact, there are a load more sub-factors around them a lot of detail. Again, the website will give you a lot more if you're interested. But these six factors, cohesion, supervisory support, etc., are all factors which are strongly cor correlated with the performance of teams. Um, but obviously, the one that we're looking at today is trust. So uh, I think it's important to recognize that trust is, um, is a foundation. It underpins a lot of these other topics. So social cohesion is all about uh, the cohesiveness of our teams. Do we like each other? Do we get on well? Do we cooperate? All of that sort of thing. And you can't imagine that happening if there isn't trust uh, within the team. We, we build trust principally through those social informal interactions and activities. So, um, so certainly we're not going to be able to do that if we're not engaging in those sort of less formal activities with each other. And it's one of the really key things we have to think about uh, when we work apart from each other. So this is the, um, the distillation of uh, the research that we've done on team performance. And as I say, um, trust really is a foundation and an underpinning of those relationships. Have a think about um, trust, the people that you trust, the people perhaps that you don't trust so much, and think about how crucial it is that we trust people and that we can rely on them, um, that, that they will keep their promises. It's all really, really important. And for those of you that know Simon Sinek, um, you'll know that, or you may have seen this uh, quote from him, that a team is not a group of people that work together, it's a group of people that trust each other. And it really is critical. So a little bit more on, on the subject. Um, we know from the research that trust operates in a couple of different um, dimensions or planes, if you will. There is the trust between colleagues, which the researchers call horizontal trust. 
And then there's the vertical trust that operates between us and our managers and, and vice versa. And both of these are important. We need to um, cultivate and sustain trusted relationships in both of those different uh, dimensions, particularly um, uh, between colleagues um, when we can rely on our colleagues uh, to give us constructive feedback, for example. And the feedback might be um, interpreted in a way that's not uh, correction or you know being being corrected by a manager or being told um, what we should be doing so it's um, it's quite an important one and and indeed it's um, you know this isn't a nice to have um, trust it's not a pink and fluffy trust this is really very very critical uh, to our relationships Another um, dimension before we move on to how uh, trust can be damaged is this notion of uh, propensity to trust. So the research tells us that people have um, different levels of propensity to trust. So the degree to which uh, I would um, look at look at you as a as a new colleague and say well I'm going to trust that I'm going to trust you and let's and until you give me a good reason not to trust you so you can imagine that, that there are some people for whom that is the the first you know that's a, a starting place but for other people they might be inherently suspicious or really not give give anybody the benefit of the doubt and this propensity to trust can be um, influenced very much by um, our, our cultures uh, by our personal experiences with with some you know with individuals or with wider groups of people and also personality so there's a number of different personality factors that um, increase or de decrease the likelihood that you will have that sort of propensity to trust you'll be you're prepared to give people uh, the benefit of the doubt if you like so that's uh, that's all about um, trust. I hope hopefully that's given you um, a few additional uh, things to think about in in terms of of why it's important. Um, but we know from the research that there are several of the factors that I shared with you earlier um, that are particularly susceptible to being damaged when we work apart, and those um, are social cohesion, information sharing, and indeed trust itself. And so. What we uh, wanted to spend uh, a couple of minutes talking about now is really um, how um, trust gets damaged. And indeed, we know that trust can be damaged quite easily. And when we're in the office together, there are more opportunities for people to gather information about each other. We can see each other, we can hear what um, each other are saying, um, we can get a sense uh, from body language and tone of voice how people are, um, and we make judgments about people. But when we're apart, if we don't take the time to spend time with each other, those things um, aren't there and um, we have less information to rely upon when we're trying to decide whether somebody else is trustworthy or whether perhaps their behaviour is leading us to the conclusion that perhaps their behaviour is a bit uh, dubious and perhaps they're not um, acting in our best interests. So we have to think a lot more when we work apart about ways in which we can um, sustain trust between us and our colleagues. We have to uh, think about uh, perhaps being more visible, uh, being in contact more often, agreeing ways um, in which we will um, report on uh, progress updates and things like that, but also taking time to think about how our behavior might be interpreted um, by other people. So rather than trust being a black and white, I don't trust somebody or I do trust somebody, we have to think about um, managing that situation and for, for all of us to be responsible um, for, for, for doing that going forward. Because there's nothing so sure as, as the fact that it, you know, take, trust takes a long while to build, um, but if you break it, it, it disappears pretty quickly. And uh, people often find it very difficult to address a breach of trust if somebody has done something um, to to upset them and to, um, to 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 damage the trust that they have on them so and then of course you've got an uphill um, journey to try to rebuild that trustworthy situation and finally my my rallying call if you like is um, to, to all of you listening is to take responsibility 
for trust. Don't regard it as something which once broken is, is not mendable um, and that um, it's not something that you have to think about, it's for other people to have to think about. You know, we should all be, uh, we all owe trust to our colleagues. Um, think about your own propensity to trust. You know, is it, is it a default for you or is it something that you have to work harder at? And is that because of your experiences in the past with particular individuals or, or teams or groups of people? Don't write it off as if there's nothing you can do about it. Take responsibility for it and encourage other people uh, in your team or your wider contacts uh, to do the same. So I think that's all I wanted to say, Partha, and uh, hopefully you've got some questions for me. Thank you so much, Karen, as always, uh, also for being my, like, you know, like an un my unpaid therapist, actually. I mean, it's always uh, uh, fulfilling to uh, hear you speak about trust and so many other issues. Uh, yeah, we actually have a couple of questions. I believe I'm also getting comments that there's some problem with this stream on YouTube, but we are streaming on Daily Motion, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, I have a couple of questions which have come in. Okay. Somebody is asking, you uh, mentioned that trust operates between colleagues and also between managers and team members. Uh, is one more important than the other? I think when I was talking about it, I implied that the, um, the relationship was, uh, was more important between um, colleagues. I'm not sure that that's really the case. I think it just operates in a different way. Um, but that I, I do think that managers have to um, assume some, respons some responsibility for um, developing um, and encouraging and cultivating trustworthy relationships between colleagues. But I also think that it's not just a managerial thing. You know, we have to encourage everybody to take responsibility because um, when we work virtually, there is, there's more at stake um, potentially. So we should be um, looking in both of those directions. Okay, okay, and uh, okay, the other thing is, uh, okay, somebody's asking, what kind of typical situations uh, do you see uh, in workplaces that breaks uh, trust between colleagues when they work virtually? And uh, why does this uh, not happen in the office when you're actually working offline? Yeah, I think um, it, lack of visibility um, leads to a lot of um, misunderstandings. You know, we have to, when we're, we're, we're working apart, we rely more on electronic um, media to communicate. And if we're not skilled um, in, you know, these different tools or we write something in a, in a very a quick way that, that is interpreted in, in the, not in the way it was expected. Um, I think uh, people can start to uh, lose trust in each other through those sorts of misunderstandings. And if we can't see each other, you know, if we were in the same room or in the same office, um, we would know immediately if somebody hadn't um, understood us or it would be easier for them to, to say that there was a, a, a misunderstanding. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it's the level of communication. It's the degree of visibility um, of what people are doing um, and what progress they're making. You know, I'm not suggesting that we have to report on our progress every minute of the day, but, but we have to think about, you know, what have we promised other people? What promises have we made? Have we made good on those promises? And if we're not able to deliver what we said we would, have we told them? You know, they don't know what we're doing. They have less visibility um, of us. Um, so we should take responsibility for saying, hey, you know, Partha, I know I promised you that, that report um, later on uh, this week, but I'm just up to here with lots of other activities. Um, is, you, you know, is yours really super critical? Can it wait till next week? And so, you, you know, you're not just sitting um, in silence expecting my report to come. Uh, you have some understanding that, um, that I'm under pressure and, and, you know, we can maybe do a bit of a deal uh, uh, to sort that situation out yeah so i guess uh, this also happens because a lot of uh, visual cues are miss missing right when you're uh, when you're actually not seeing somebody there's no body language and all you're doing yeah. is kind of focused on this to the voice and yes. misunderstandings may come because of that uh, Yes, absolutely. And, and actually, if we were both in the office together and I'd seen you all day and I could see you were looking stressed and, and overwhelmed and, and whatever, or you were very agitated, then I might 
you know, talk to you about what was going on and, and seek to understand more about the context in which you're working. And that's the thing that's missing when we're not together. It's that context. Um, and obviously during this COVID period, the context for, for people has been so different. You know, people with children at home, people with um, other relatives to care for, um, people who've had the illness themselves, people that are very anxious and stressed and worried. Um, and all of those things um, impact on us. And if we don't take time to be social with each other and to catch up, to care about each other and to very obviously make it clear that we do care about each other, then we can start to drift apart. And that's what the virtual experience is all about. It, it's about trying to, to say, well, let's, do, let's find a way to do the things that we would do in the office so that we don't lose those warm relationships that we had when we were together, or indeed that we build uh, warm relationships with new colleagues and we take responsibility for it. We recognize that this can get damaged, but it, by no means is it a given that it will be damaged. We just have to be more intentional about it, to think about it and to spend a bit of time on it. I know it's, you know, it's all more stuff to do uh, as if people weren't busy enough already, but it does pay dividends. Interesting. This is, this is an interesting one. Uh, how would you know, I don't know who's written this, how would you know if you had uh, broken someone's trust in you? How do I know? Mm. So it's a good question, get... isn't it? Yes. I mean, if you think about um, how your relationship with somebody is at the moment, um, you know, perhaps there's a lot of warmth between you, um, you have um, informal discussions, um, you catch up with each other, and suddenly that stops. You know, suddenly there's a difference in behavior or that person started to email you instead of ringing you or ca calling you on, um, you know, on, on Teams or on Zoom or whatever. It's a, a change, potentially a change in behavior or a, or a change in um, warmth. Um, you know, it, it's those, those feelings that, that something has changed between us. Now, it might not be because of a breach of trust. It might be because that person's just stressed and, and anxious. But if they start to communicate with you in a way that's not familiar, um, then check in with them. You know, because these things left, um, left undealt with can be quite toxic um, and they can lead to conflict. And then you've got a whole other issue to, uh, to try to address and solve. So, so you're saying we need to uh, confront that and just not move on, forget about it? Well, confront is perhaps a bit strong. Um, I don't mean um, to address it in an adversarial way, but I just mean to make, you know, to, to politely inquire, you know, is everything okay? Have I done something? Um, is, is there something I missed? Um, you know, you don't seem quite yourself. Um, if we're not honest with each other, then these things can go past and they can lie dormant, um, waiting to fire up again. I was talking ab about this to a colleague recently, you know, there, there were, um, he were, he'd been experiencing uh, something with a colleague where, you know, the, 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 the relationship had gone a little cool and eventually they had a discussion and uh, realized that there had been, you know, somebody had dropped the ball um, and that person had moved on, um, but there was still this, this thing nagging in the back of their head that actually you let, you let me down. I haven't told you that you did, but you did. And now I'm kind of, I kind of want to punish you a, a bit and I don't quite know how to address it um, because it is difficult, um, you know, we, well, it, it isn't difficult for everybody. I think some people can be quite, um, you know, quite bold about it. But, but a lot of other people would kind of go, oh, well, you know, it's no point saying anything. They're never going to change. Um, you know, and then, then you're just caught. Right. Well, we could go on and on, Karen, on this topic. I think this is an endless Good. Topic, it's a big one, uh, isn't it, Parker? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we are kind of uh, running to the end of our half an hour that we promised people. Okay. I think uh, that was one promise that we made to people that will keep it short and sweet. And if okay. you want to know anything else, we can always find us and write to us. Uh, so thanks a lot, Karen, for doing this. Uh, Pleasure.
and the, right in the middle of the week. And, uh, and thanks everyone else for joining us, when, especially when we know you have a choice of so many other event, you know, things to do. And uh, you, can, you can have a look at the events play, page on blend.world. There are more 10 minute talks that you're planning with Karen and with others, and we'll be happy to have you there. I understand I'm just getting some messages, messages that there's some problem with the, uh, with the stream on YouTube, but we'll fix it next time. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us uh, and uh, have a good day.